electric guitar, the sound of rock and roll. From Buddy Holly to Jimi Hendrix, from Eddie Van Halen to Zach Wilde, the electric guitar has always been the driving force of rock, with each guitarist finding his own voice. But how do you record your own electric guitar, the sound that defines your music? Welcome to the Neumann Home Studio Academy. In this tutorial series we're going to show you how to get a great electric guitar sound by miking your amplifier. Now the first question you may ask is why use a real amp anyway? Why not use modeling software that gives you dozens of virtual amps and virtual microphones? Well, there are two good reasons for that. Number one, sound quality. There is nothing that sounds more real than a real amplifier. Reason number two, modeling software does give you hundreds of options, but they are all created by people that you have never met. They're all created according to their taste and their playing style. So how could that be your sound? A lot of people will tell you that miking a real guitar amp is difficult, but it really isn't. With the right tools and techniques, it's actually quite easy. Let's first have a look at the instrument itself. Here we have an electric guitar and an amplifier. People tend to think of those as separate items, but there's a lot of interaction between the two. Basically, a guitar amp serves the same function as the body of an acoustic guitar. It adds volume and it shapes the sound. So think of your guitar amp as part of your instrument, which is another reason why you shouldn't replace it with a piece of software. That's right. Now, a great guitar sound starts with a good instrument. And even the best instrument needs a perfect setup. So get yourself a new set of strings before they become old and dull. Preferably a couple of days before you start recording so they stay in tune a bit better. Exact tuning is absolutely crucial. Even if your guitar is just a little bit out of tune, it is going to rub with the other instruments. And it also makes it harder for the singer to hit the right notes. So check your tuning frequently between the takes. For the same reasons, make sure the bridges are set up correctly for your string gauge. That's important to ensure proper intonation across the entire neck. What you hear now is a good guitar with perfect tuning and a perfect bridge setup. As you can hear, if you stay low on the neck, the sound is, is full and is strong. If you go up, it stays like that. Stay strong. See that? Okay, now if you compare to this guitar, this guitar has got perfect tuning as well, but it does not have a perfect setup for the bridge. This is what you get. Go for it. If you stay low on the arm, it's okay. If you go up the neck, So we want to stick to a good guitar with good tuning and a perfect setup for the bridge. Like that one. Okay, now let's talk about the other half of your instrument, your amplifier. There's a common myth that says you have to turn the volume all the way up to 11 in order to make a great recording. That is not true. Most amplifiers sound best at medium levels. You do need a bit of volume, but there is no need to play at ear blasting levels. And as for tone controls, as for tone controls, set up your amplifier so it sounds good to your ears. That's what it's all about. We want to capture the sound as you hear it in your room. What about effects? It's usually best to record your guitar with those effects that shape and define your sound, such as distortion and wah-wah pedals. 
but cut down on effects that make your sound wider or add space, unless they make your sound unique. A bit of spring reverb is okay, but digital reverbs, delays and chorus effects are better added later on during mixdown. Okay, to summarize, get your guitar in shape and dial in the sounds that you like. It's as simple as that. And now let's try to capture that sound. Let's try to capture your sound. The most common method to record electric guitar is to put a microphone right in front of the speaker. This method has two major advantages. Number one, you get a very direct sound that works well in the mix. Number two, the mic picks up very little room ambience. So this method works well in a treated and an untreated room. The standard procedure is to place the microphone halfway between the center of the speaker and the edge of the speaker. The distance between the mic and the cabinet depends on the type of microphone you're using. With a large diaphragm studio condenser microphone, such as this Neumann TLM-102, start at about 15 centimeters, which is about 6 inches. Okay, now let's have a listen to what that does. Sounds good, doesn't it? In our next episode, we'll show you ways to refine your microphone placement to get even better sounds. Until then, enjoy recording, and we'll see you soon at the Neumann Home Studio Academy. Cheers.